guys and welcome back to another tutorial so today we're going to be updating the TNT tutorial that I made a while ago uh, this one will basically uh, has a little bit of improvements and stuff like that uh, the first improvement is uh, you can actually connect redstone to it now so you can actually trigger a explosion by uh, redstone so that will work and uh, just some minor improvements as well like um, the timer system that actually ticks down like that so it's actually in the timer system when it's count like after it's been lit so uh, what basically happens there is we're using MBT uh, entity variables now so uh, it's a little bit um, easier to set up than um, having to input a uh, global variable on on for your own mod and stuff like that it's all set up through um, the actual uh, the actual uh, procedure itself so you don't need to do any configuration on that end uh, another thing that I did change, and uh, before there was collision, apparently there still is. I'm not sure why that's happening, because in all technicality there shouldn't be any collision. Um, I think, maybe. Let's uh, go quickly check that out. Uh, yeah, see, I have a disable collision box, so in all technicality it shouldn't be you shouldn't be colliding but maybe it's just a bug with this particular version um, alright so what we're basically doing is we're creating a uh, entity for the um, the actual explosion because entities can actually uh, be affected by uh, explosion and they'll actually kind of fly away so that's why we're having the uh, prime TNT as an entity not as a block because if it was a block then it would not have that same effect as if you wanted to make a TNT cannon um, there is no actual way to make a block as far as I know to actually have uh, some force be behind it it might be possible if you enable gravity, but I'm not sure if the block will actually start flying or if it'll just like destroy. So you might want to play around with that. Uh, the downside to this is it it doesn't flash like vanilla TNT. There's no way I can actually go and get an entity to flash like that. So it's just a uh, one little uh, you know downside of not uh, being able to um, use a block. All right, so we have a generic explosion, uh, extinguish fire, and extinguish fire right here for the TNT sounds. Um, most of these other settings are just basic. Uh, we need our Timporter entity t uh, UV map and our uh, block mo or entity model. All that will be provided in the workspace uh, and the zip that I provide on my website. So after that, uh, you want it as a mob. Uh, I might be able to go with an entity too, but I have it set to mob, it seems to work fine. Um, you might want to adjust the health to be a lot higher, so you guys, it will be, it'll basically uh, withstand a lot more. And you want to set the experience to zero. Um, movement speed, now, I would leave this at 0 0.3 um, just because it seems to be working just fine. Uh, the, the targeting range needs to be 64. You can set this, this really to be honest it shouldn't matter too much. This is just to uh, how far the rendering distance is, um, but 64 seems to be fine. Uh, the attack strength and... Um, protection you might want to set protection to zero and uh, you can set the attack strength to whatever you want this isn't really needed this should be fine if you set it to zero um, for immunity uh, I've enabled all these different block or different uh, check boxes so you basically it doesn't take any damage when it's in the primed um, thing it's very similar to regular TNT uh, we're not making it writable because it's only going to be lasting like five seconds anyways so it's not going to be a big deal 
and honestly, I don't think anyone wants to ride a explosive, but if you do, then, uh, yeah, uh, you might want to enable that. Um, and these last two checkboxes aren't required. Uh, I didn't add any particles, and this is where the procedure comes in. Uh, primed bomb on, on mob tick update. So this is a ticked update procedure. This is where I made most of the improvements, although some of the other improvements have been on some of the other procedures as well. Uh, so rather than having it go through the um, global variable and stuff, I've totally just gotten rid of that whole global variable system. I'm using an entity um, MBT timer. I've just named the MBT timer. I'm basically getting it to do the exact same thing as the global timer. It's just counting up by uh, 0 0.05, which is what you need for one second. Pardon me, not one second, one tick. And every tick the, up the procedure is run, it will increase the entity timer until it reaches four seconds, which is going to be testing if it's equal or greater than four seconds, if that's true. It's going to um, spawn a generic explode uh, particles around, or pardon me, it's not going to do that. It's going to uh, play the generic uh, explode sound. Then it's going to spawn the particles uh, within a uh, six by six by six area. It should be uh accurate to where it needs to spawn i'm not sure if that will be a little bit offset it or not i don't know if i have i haven't paid much attention to that particular part i was more focused on setting up fixing some of the other features and uh, with speed of one so the particle should be pretty fast and we're just using the explosion normal uh, some of the other explosion types were removed so uh, we only can use a normal on newer versions and then we're basically exploding it. Uh, default TNT is 4, so you might want to set this a little higher if you want to make it more powerful. And then lastly, we're setting the MBT timer to 0. Not that it should matter much because it's going to be despawning next, but it's just good practice to end the timer at 0 so it doesn't continue to uh, run. And um, it's basically like a catch if it does somehow miraculously have a bug that it keeps running so that's basically that procedure and the only one for the entity so we can move on uh, you want to enable a uh, AI and you want to make sure the AI tasks are empty this will allow you to um, have the gravity of the entity to fall down uh, this also has the enabling a AI will basically allow you to use the entity as like a uh, catapult for other TNT, prime TNT. So basically what this will do is if you can basically make TNT cannons if this if the AI is enabled. If it's not, then it's just going to stay in the same place. Um, outside of that, there's nothing else here that you need to do. Uh, spawning parameters, you don't need anything. And that's all there is for the um, actual primed bomb. Now if we go to the bomb block, um, we have basically just used a solid block, uh, kept the um, parameters for the block size, all of the rotations the same, and stuff like that, so that's good. Uh, I have it to basically have a material of TNT, it sounds like a plant, and uh, it's under the creative uh, inventory for redstone. Uh, some of the other properties are below here, so you can kind of see what those properties are. Uh, we have an axe to destroy it. Um, I don't think there's any particular tool. You could probably set this to zero and that would be fine. Um, I don't see any um, particular use of having it to be an axe or anything like that, so you could probably disable that. And um, yeah. It just drops itself, basic settings. Uh, one thing that you do want to do is make sure that it's on uh, a tick rate of 20. Let's just make sure that it uh, updates um, 
every second and uh, does redstone connect to it you want to enable that if you're going to allow it to connect to redstone and have a redstone pulse um, you might want to set the block on color to map to TNT and uh, reaction to being pushed I'm not sure what TNT is so you might want to uh, destroy it or maybe just leave it on normal I'm not sure um, how TNT reacts to pistons, but uh, that's basically what those are for. Um, no particles. Uh, you don't need to enable a inventory for the block, so move on. And uh, the next thing that you want to do is set up a block on block right clicked event. So we're going to edit this one. This one's basically testing for two things. Uh, it's testing if the main hand is equal to flint and steel, or if it's equal to a fire charge. Now, uh, it acts a little bit differently based on what one you actually click on. Uh, if you click on with flint and steel in your main hand, then uh, it's going to uh, play a sound of the uh, entity TNT primed. And I tried getting it to the nearest settings as possible. Um, well, he says it's 1.5, but they didn't have any values for the level of the um, sound, so I'm just assuming that it's one. Um, and we're basically, I fixed the location where it was being played. Now it's placed in the center of the block, so um, it should be fixed for that. Uh, then we're basically spawning the prime TNT. We're going to deal uh, one damage to the main hand item. Now, if we basically test for the item in the main hand, and then we can use the same thing for testing the main hand for this. Now, that will basically bypass um, the oh, what was it? Item stack dependency. Okay, that was not the right one. Uh, provided item stack. So as you can see, item stack is here. Now that basically right click events and many block procedures don't support this variable or this particular block. So we can bypass that and use uh, item in main hand for the provided entity. And then we can still damage the item that's in the main hand through that particular way. And then we're just basically removing the block and same thing basically goes for the fire charge except we're just removing one from the player's inventory. Uh, we can even um, remove this, put a main hand thing there and then we can make sure that it's always removing it from the main hand of that provided player because we already know that it's in the provided player's main hand so that's probably better to set it up that way. And uh, yeah, that's basically all there is, is just removing the block after. So we'll save that. So I'll make sure to update the procedure in the file. And uh, this one is uh, when block destroyed by explosion. Now, there I have noticed a few things with this. And not always is it going to um, basically run this procedure. Sometimes if there's a lot of TNT, it will just um, destroy the block for some reason. I'm not sure why, but uh, it just happens. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. Uh, basically what it's doing is it's just playing the prime TNT sound, spawning the entity for the prime TNT, and then it's removing the block. So that's all that's happening here. And we also want to do the exact same thing for redstone on. This will allow it so when it gets a signal, it will um, basically change the block. So again, playing the sound, it's going to spawn the entity and then it's going to remove the block. And that's all there is to the procedures for this particular file. So moving on, we don't have it to generate anywhere and it's simple as that. That's all there is to making TNT. So if you're new to my channel, uh, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, the files will be uh, in the description to my project page for this particular project and then under the video there is a download for all the uh, files used in the project itself so you guys can get the workspace, procedures, all that stuff. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.